mindfulness moments. Hi, I'm Jerry. I use the pronouns he, him, they, them, and per, which is short for persons and also short for perfect, which is the essence of what I want each of you to feel uh, as we become more mindful and as we enjoy mindful moments. Today I'm going to continue to talk to you about five love languages. I'm going to um, speak briefly about each one and then we're going to talk about receiving gifts. Receiving gifts. Uh, first, an, a little overview about each of the five love languages. So there is words of affirmation. Words of affirmation include compliments, words of encouragement, praise. Um, what I really like to do is to follow the encouragement, follow the praise or acknowledgement with examples because it, it gives clearer communication for what you're actually thanking that person for or what you're actually acknowledging that individual for doing or acting or behaving or thinking. Um, and so examples are really helpful when you're expressing words of affirmation. They increase the self-esteem and self-worth of the individuals and bring out their full potential as they focus on the values, characters, and virtues demonstrated through behaviors, thoughts, actions, intentions. The next one is quality time. Quality time includes spending quality time with an individual, giving undivided attention, no multitasking, no social media, to an individual by sharing genuine, authentic thoughts and feelings and listening intently, active listening, and participating in activities that have meaning and purpose to the individual. Interacting with those around you on this level by sharing something that's important to them, even for just minutes a day, even for just minutes a day. It doesn't have to be hour long. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes. It could be two minutes. It could be for the length of a pop song. And you're sitting with that person who really likes the song. They're going to share it with you. You're there listening to that song or watching that music video or what have you um, or listening to them talk about something that's important to them. You're able to give that quality time and you're able to honor it and you're able to intentionally be present in the moment. That is meaningful. Uh, receiving gifts which is what we're going to talk about today, receiving gifts. Whether made or purchased, gifts show you care and that you value the relationship. The value or price of the gift is irrelevant. It can range from a note left from a parent to a child in their let bag or lunchbox, or an award that is presented at a ceremony or social event. For parents, the love language of receiving gifts is also about refusing things we feel are inappropriate. This judgment call is made from the heart. What this means for parents and caregivers, the love language of receiving gifts is also about refusing things we feel are inappropriate. It's about honoring the interaction and the relationship you have with the person that's giving this to you. So maybe not just for parents and caregivers, but here that's what I wrote. Um, but maybe with, with even a significant other, you know, um, they, they come and they give you a balloons and a present for your birthday. They give you um, a teddy bear and um, they give you, you know, all these materialistic things and at the end of the day, maybe you're realizing, you know, not everything was meaningful to me. And sometimes too much is too much. In this day and age, we have too much crap. We have too much stuff around the house, too much clutter. 
Um, and so refusing that, refusing gifts sometimes, is also a way of um, receiving gifts. You're now allowing the person to know this is what I value and this is what's going to be meaningful to me. So if you're interested in letting me know that I have that meaning towards you, this is how you can show it. It's not about being demanding. It's not about being materialistic. It's not about, um, well, for lack of a better word, spoiling a child when you give them these gifts. Or if an individual's primary love language is receiving gifts, it's not that they're greedy or that they're um, materialistic, for lack of a better word. Because the gifts can come in so many ways and mean so many different things, um, sometimes refusing gifts on certain occasions and at certain times is just as valuable to yourself. It honors yourself just as much as receiving them from someone you love, someone you care about, someone who cares about you, someone who wants to show you that um, you're important to them. Acts of service. This is about doing something specifically for someone else. You are not multitasking, nor are you distracted. You are focused on giving that moment to them, be it your child, your friend, your neighbor, your partner, your roommate, your spouse. When performing an act of service, remember to tell the individual and show them that you are doing this because you appreciate them. What's important about this love language is that when you perform an act of service, they might not be sitting right next to you when you're doing the dishes for them or when you're mopping the floor for them or when you're cleaning the bathroom tiles for them. They're not there sitting around waiting for you to do this. It's something you're going to do on your own time, but it's something that you care deeply about doing because you know it's important. You know that it's important to your roommate that you don't leave hair and dust around the house, so I'm in a vacuum. I know that that's important to my roommate. I know that it's important to my roommate that um, the last few days, he's had a lot of work. He's been really busy. He's out of the house a lot. There are going to be dishes that are left over and in the sink. So I'm going to do these dishes and I'm going to wash them. But it's not just about the act of doing the service. It's now doing the service fully and intentionally and being in the moment something I was not good at. I used to do the dishes all the time. Who's going to do? Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Was I doing them carefully? No. A dish broke every time I was doing the dishes. Almost every time. Um, uh, was I vacuuming and mopping correctly? No. There were still puddles on the floor and there's dust in the corner. I didn't do a good job. I was not in the moment. So then my roommate would come back what did you do? I did it for you. I did it for you. So when you're performing these acts of service, don't have to confuse yourself with doing them perfectly. We're not going to be perfect. If we genuinely missed an area, if the soap on our hands make the dish slippery and it dropped and it fell and it broke, and that's happened once out of 10 times, it should be forgiven. It was an honest mistake. But when you're able to practice being in the moment each and every time, I'm not multitasking when I do the dishes. I'm not doing the dishes and also talking on the phone and also have the TV on, you know. Uh, I'm not cleaning the bathroom tiles and also cooking dinner and having the stove on and everything happening in the kitchen. I'm intentionally doing these acts of service and giving my um, my attention and my present moment to doing it. And if I feel that I'm becoming distracted or if I feel that I'm not doing justice to this act of service anymore, take a break. You don't have to do all those dishes at once. You don't have to clean the whole bathroom area and bathtub and toilet and sink all at once. And this is what I discovered the importance of taking breaks, honoring yourself as you perform these acts of services. So not only are you able to encourage yourself in an environment where you're able to continually give these acts of service if it happens to be the primary love language of someone, but now you're able to do it fully and intentionally honoring yourself. 
you know, I've been vacuuming for 15 minutes and it's not that long, but I'm tired now. So I'm going to take a break and have lunch. I'm going to do 15 more minutes later. But what's important is each of those 15 minutes, I'm doing it well. I'm lifting up the furniture. I'm going into the corners. I've got my different um, applicators or different parts to the vacuum cleaner that I'm using that matches the job I'm doing with the vacuum cleaner. And everything has its purpose. And I'm intentional. And I'm in the moment. And I'm present while doing these things. That's going to be important. And lastly, the last one, and I leave it um, as the last one to discuss because even though it's my favorite love language, it's physical touch. Um, but during these times of COVID, during while we're still kind of somewhat in the in a pandemic, uh, while there's still several hundred active cases, this is going to be tricky to express. This is going to be tricky um, when you know you want to share that with a neighbor, with a friend that you haven't seen in a while, um, with someone who may not be in your specific bubble so mind you if this language is important for you to give and receive which it can be we have to acknowledge that it is for some of us like myself pay attention to their body language the person that you're giving this to um, pay attention to um, how they're receiving it and it doesn't hurt Go to the Toronto Public Health website. Google a few things about wearing face masks, face shields, gloves, sanitizers. Make sure you have these things. Make sure you're being safe about it. Because the last thing you want is to get someone sick or to make them feel uncomfortable or to make them worry from giving them a hug or shaking their hand or giving them a high five uh, because these are truly unpredictable times. Mind you, that's typically how we will share this um, love language. Physical touch is, you know, a pat on the back, um, hand on the shoulder, um, high five, a hug, a kiss. Um, all these things are ways to show um, this love language. But if it's someone that you haven't seen in a while or someone who once again isn't in your bubble, in your close bubble, um, please check out the Toronto Public Health website, make yourself safe, be safe as you're active in expressing this uh, particular language of love so that you can keep yourself safe and keep safe uh, those around you. So today we're talking about receiving gifts, receiving gifts, receiving gifts. Uh, like I said, um, this can be an important love language. It can be someone's primary love language. They feel loved the most when they receive something special from someone. They feel honored the most. They feel treasured the most. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're spoiled. Because once again, we're going to think about um, the fact that the value and the price of these gifts, that's not important. I have a few examples of um, gifts that were shared with me that are priceless. And they've been made special by the person that shared it with me in the moment they shared it. And to this day, weeks later, months later, years later, I have this gift from them, not because I'm materialistic, not because I'm greedy, but because it reminds me that I'm loved. First, I'll show you a gift that I have readily available that I love sharing with others, and it's my own published children's book. It's a book about feelings. And um, even having after written the book about feelings, I don't understand them well. I really don't. And so that's why I found it really important to make these um, mindfulness moment videos uh, because it's a way to honor what I don't understand and what I don't know and, and a, a perfect way to, um, to use this time to then explore it. And not only am I exploring it by Googling and doing research and finding out things about it, 
But the fact that I'm sharing it with someone else and the fact that I'm able to make a video about it, the fact that I know that people are going to watch this video, that it's going to be on a platform that people are going to watch and see and they're going to listen to, it's going to make me feel more encouraged to find out more, find out more about feelings, find out more about love languages, find out more about mindfulness moments um, and things like that. So this is something that I readily give and this is something that if um, you know I meet a, a new friend or um, I happen to share an experience with someone, let's say um, a few weeks ago and the long weekend of August, I was invited to um, a camping trip. Haven't been camping in over 10 years. So, um, and when I went 10 years ago, it was only the one time I've ever been. So really you could say I've never been camping. To be quite frank, I, I, it wasn't something that I've done often. But putting myself in the element of uh, having to work together with other campers to pitch the tent, to um, you know, um, ask for things when you need it. You know, I didn't have what I needed with my tent mate to start the fire, but we had food to share. So we went to someone else's fire and we shared our food and they shared their fire. Um, so. So having had that experience, um, I met I met a lot of people there, and so what I did on one of the nights was I gave them each a copy of my book, and I could kind of gauge, um, you know, whose primary love language was receiving gifts. You know, right away they were inspired. They, I'm going to make this a yearbook. I'm going to get other people to sign the pages from this book, and it's become a, a beautiful memory keepsake for people so this is a gift that I readily share with people and if you've ever been in my drop-in program if you've ever um, celebrated the holidays with me uh, in my program most likely you might have one of this in your home so that's a gift that I readily share with people and uh, still have tons of to share on that note um, now I'm gonna talk about gifts that I've received um, and maybe it'll give you an idea of gifts that uh, you can share with others. And once again, it's not about the value or the price. Actually, it is about the value. But the value, meaning the value to you, the importance to you, the love that it has that's in these things that you're sharing, even though it's a physical object that you're receiving and giving. You don't have to wait until the holidays. You don't have to wait until the birthday. You don't have to wait until... Um, you know, um, a special event, graduation, um, uh, anniversary, to, to share these gifts, to share these moments. And that's something that's almost taken me a lifetime to learn. Uh, so now, you know, on my travels, when I go camping, when I take a road trip, when I'm with my um, significant other uh, at, at a yard sale or in the mall or wherever it may be, and I see something that makes me think of someone, Life's too short. I'm going to get it. And the next time I see them, I'm going to say, you know what? Have this. I thought of you. And oftentimes uh, when I meet with people that I haven't seen in weeks or months or year, I'll put together a little baggie for them because I really like doing that. I have got so much to share. And if I know that they're an artist and I've got some art supplies I'm not going to use, hey, um, would you mind if I pass these along to you? Because I've got no use for them, but I know you love to paint and... I've got paintbrushes that I'm not using. So I'll put them in that little baggie, you know. Um, for example, I'm seeing my friend Melissa in a few weeks. And um, I know that she really likes books, for example. She loves spending her time reading books. This is an example. Uh, and I've got books that I'm done with these. Melissa, have you heard of such and such a title? No, but I'd love to read it. Perfect. It's going to go in the Melissa baggie just for you. And you'll find that, um, or not that you'll find it. Um, something that I love to do is, um, if I haven't seen someone for a really long time, is have little baggies for them. So I'll have a Riley baggie for when I'm seeing Riley next time. That might have art supplies. It might have um, a picture of us that I found that maybe Riley doesn't have. Uh, when I'm seeing Melissa next time, things that go in the Melissa baggie. Um, that book that, that she said that she was interested in or um, 
or even a cutout from a magazine because it's from an inside joke that we have and it really made me laugh. It's about the emotional value of these things that you're sharing for other people and that other people share with you. So I'm going to share now a few things that people have given to me. Um, and what's really exciting is after I make this video and after it gets uploaded, I'm going to tag these people and I'm going to let them know that these gifts are still with me, that I still treasure them. There's some place that I can see every day and it helps me feel loved. So in no specific order, well, maybe chronological order, this is the first one I got. It's made of wood. It's a little, it's a little religious. I'm not very religious myself, um, but it's, it's baby Jesus. This was given to me by my friend Louisa and she had just gotten out of the hospital. This was for an extended hospital stay. She was there for several months, maybe even 11 months, I think close to a year from different hospitals from St. Michael's to whichever to Coxwell hospital. I think it was, there were different hospitals that I visited her at. And when she was getting out of the hospital, I was just going through some challenging times of my own. And she said, when someone gave this to her and it was a very special person to her and this has become very special to them. And she put it in my hand. And she said, Jerry, you need to know this. It's been months. And maybe, who knows, maybe I will come across someone in my journey of life who will remind me of this and who I will say to them, you know what? Take this. This was given to me from a very special friend, but you need to know this. So that was... Um, another similar gift that I've kept, and once again, it's not about the price. It's not about, you know, is it a diamond ring? Is it a, a sparkly watch or bracelet? Or You see, I have none of those things. Those things don't matter to me. Um, but these things do. Uh, this one. This one is a little plaque, and it says, thank you for caring. So I want to share that with all of you. Thank you for for caring, for watching this video, for watching me, for following us on our early on platform and our Facebook page and what have you. Thank you for caring. And the friend who gave this to me, um, it was during that camping trip I was talking about earlier um, when I didn't know how to pitch a tent or, or how to be a good camper. Um, but something this person recognized was that I care. And he gave this to me and he said, just like that other gift that I shared with you, he said, this was made for me, um, someone really special, but I want you to have it now. Thank you for caring. Isn't that beautiful? It can be just as simple as words on a plaque, in a card, on a notebook, in a little note. That's, that's a gift. That's a gift. And it helps me to honor that moment. Um, so hopefully, by me, by sharing these gifts with you, you can um, share uh, with others uh, gifts that you think of or be inspired of thinking of different gifts. It doesn't mean that you're going to go and spend money on something. It doesn't mean that you have to go shopping. It doesn't mean that you have to go online and buy something to give to them. Because if it comes from the heart, This, I was overjoyed to receive. Um, and my friend who made little ghosties in, in his home, spare pieces of wood. He takes the lumber that people are about to throw out or have no use for, and he makes these little tiny ghosties. There's tons of different ones, different expressions from uh, different characters from movies. And he had a whole box of them that time. And, uh, he, he gave me the box and he said, pick one. For me to choose, I mean, I they all looked very similar to me. I was just seeing them for the first time. I admired 
how adorable they were. I admired the work and the effort that was put into making these. But I, I had no inspiration to choose. And I said, you know what? You choose one for me. And, and within moments, in that instant, just trickling through, took this one out. And he said, you know what? This is a Jerry ghosty. And you know what Jerry's doing? Jerry has his arms out. He's welcoming the universe. And he's singing. He's saying, hey, world. I'm here. Jerry ghosty. Isn't that beautiful? And so a gift can be something that you make to share with someone. It can be something that someone made to share with you. And lastly, the gift that I'm going to share that was given to me, very inexpensive, um, a deck of playing cards, but it's, it's not even what, what playing cards are typically for. Um, this individual had written different messages on, playing, on the playing cards, different words. And the words had no rhythm or rhyme. It's just words that came out that were authentic to her. And she had a whole deck of the cards and she shuffled them. Pick one. Pick it. This one is written on a jack of hearts and it says, think hard, speak gently. And then she went on and she explained it. Be passionate about your ideas. Be passionate about what you're thinking of. Um, be hard. Be hard. Hold it. Uh, don't let go of these feelings. But speak gently. Let love lead how you express these thoughts. Let love and gentleness and kindness flow from you. Beautiful. What a gift. It's not a diamond ring. It's not a... But you know what? This is more valuable to me than that. And throughout the weekend, while we were camping together, she went around with different people and she did it again. And so I'm just going to share with you. This was the first one I got. At first, I looked at the card and I thought, Joker, I, wh what is this card for? She goes, no, look at the words. Okay, but it says wood. It says wood statue. What does that mean? She looked at the card. She goes, you know, Wood statue is a really confusing one, but it's a reminder for you to be strong like a statue. It's a reminder for you to be strong in your opinions and your thoughts and your ideas like a statue. But also just like wood, how it grows, how it um, becomes um, a ghosty, how it becomes a ghosty or a plaque that you share, or even as wood belonging on a tree, how it continues to grow and become timeless. You're both these things. You're steadfast and you're hard like, like a statue. You're made with that purpose. You have that um, essence, but a wooden statue, but with wood. And wood is from nature, it's from life. It permeates, it grows. Wow, I clutched this to my heart. I clutched it so close. And I thought, well, this is beautiful. And throughout the weekend, she gave me a few more. Um, two more I'll share with you. Burdened blessing. Burdened blessing. To recognize that things in life can be a burden to us. But as a strong believer in a higher purpose and a strong believer in life coaching and, and that nothing happens for coincidence, knowing that even though things at times may be burdening to us, there's a blessing behind it. There's a truth behind it. There's a purpose behind it. There's a lesson behind it. And wow, what a good reminder that was. Last card she gave me, actually second last, I had lost one of them. But this is a red yesterday. So if you happen to make these cards of your own to share with others, feel free to write them in English and in French, in Cantonese. You're there to explain it to them as these people are receiving this gift from you. I found this to be one of the most unique gifts to share. So a red yesterday. Um, some things that you know are hurtful to you. Some things you know are bad habits. Some things you know that you've recognized. 
stop them. And it should have been stopped yesterday. And that's a good reminder. And mind you, this was um, cards that were shared with me from a, a specific individual. And over the course of the weekend, these were cards that were randomly drawn. As I randomly drew these cards, though, look. Look at the pattern it's made. There's a joker. There's the, the jack, the queen, the king. And the card I, think, uh, I lost was actually an ace. Isn't that... Isn't that peculiar? Even in randomly drawing cards, I found cards that had meaning to me and also um, was a beautiful poker hand, although I don't play. So that's my spiel on receiving gifts. Um, and another reminder that gifts don't have to be something expensive you buy. Words written on a deck of cards, something special that someone shared with you that you're going to pass along to share with someone else or something you've made that you're always happy to share. Namaste. I wish you time. I wish you time to enjoy all the things that your heart is excited about enjoying. And I wish you peace in your heart so that you can receive the gifts that are coming to you. Always. Mindfulness moments!